I want to get started with this story about Barack Obama. So um, we're going to start with the video. Then we'll get into the current situation. I want to take you back to a debate between Barack Obama and Mitt Romney when Obama was running for re-election, just to remind you of the situation that had taken place in Libya and the scrutiny that Obama received because of it. And I'll tell you why that's important with his current uh, statement. Let's go ahead and dive into this clip here. Closing in, I want to still get a lot of people in. I want to ask you something, Mr. President, and then have the governor just quickly. Uh, Your secretary of state, as I'm sure you know, has said uh, that she takes full responsibility for the attack on the diplomatic mission in Benghazi. Does the buck stop with your secretary of state as far as what went on here? Secretary Clinton has done an extraordinary job, but she works for me. I'm the president, and I'm always responsible. And that's why nobody's more interested in finding out exactly what happened than I did. The day after the attack, Governor, I stood in the Rose Garden, and I told the American people in the world that we were going to find out exactly what happened, that this was an act of terror, and I also said that we're going to hunt down those who committed this crime. And then a few days later, I was there greeting the caskets coming into Andrews Air Force Base and grieving with the families. And the suggestion that anybody in my team, whether the Secretary of State, our UN ambassador, anybody on my team would play politics or mislead when we've lost four of our own governor is offensive. Losing four of your own compared to the civilian casualties in Libya is not, I don't even think you should make that comparison. The number of civilian casualties in Libya, when we always say that Obama like bombed brown people abroad and talking about Libya, it's, it doesn't even add up. Not a good comparison. That's not what we do. That's not what I do as president. That's not what I do as commander in chief. Governor, if you want to reply yeah, I, just quickly I should, I should to this, do, please. I, I, I think it's interesting. The president just said something, which, which is that on the day after the attack, he went to the Rose Garden and said that this was an act of terror. That's what I said. You said in the Rose Garden, the day after the attack, it was an act of terror. I beg your pardon. I never promised you a Rose Garden. It was not a spontaneous please, please demonstration. Is that what you're saying? Please proceed, Governor. I I, I want to make sure we get that for the record, because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. He did, in in fact, sir. So let me let me call it an act of terror. Can you say that a little louder, Candy? He he did call it an act of terror. It did as well take. It did as well uh, take uh, two weeks or so uh, for the whole idea of there being a riot out there about this tape to come out. You're correct about that. The administration, the administration indicated that this was a a reaction to a to a video and was a spontaneous reaction. It It took them a long time to say this was a terrorist act by a terrorist group. And and to suggest, am I incorrect in that regard? On on Sunday, the uh, your your secretary, your, excuse me, the uh, ambassador of the United Nations went on the Sunday t- television shows and and spoke about how yeah, this yeah. was a spontaneous I, I, reaction. I have to, we're going to go ahead and stop it there. I wanted to to show this clip just to jog your memory. Number one, that uh, Obama, the situation that happened in, Lib- in Libya, uh, Benghazi in particular, uh, was a hot button item uh, going into that reelection uh, campaign. And then also I want to remind you that Mitt Romney was a weak candidate, stumbling over his words, very nervous, just a very weak candidate. Look, he was... He was my governor in in Massachusetts at one point in time. So I have plenty of room to criticize (laughs) to criticize Mitt Romney. Now, I played that video because there was a recent statement given uh, by Barack Obama about Libya in particular. That sounds a little bit hypocritical considering his administration's actions in Libya. And that was this statement here on Twitter. Barack Obama said, If you're looking to help people impacted by the floods in Libya, check out these organizations providing relief. 
So Libya did recently have a flood and you'll see a picture here of the flood. And he was actually telling people to check out the Obama foundation, of course, right? Like he would recommend his own foundation, of course, bragging rights there for Barack Obama, apparently, but this is it, it's so hypocritical because now all of a sudden you pretend to care about the people in Libya, but you wouldn't care about those people in Libya when you were bombing them. And we'll get into the implications of the U.S. intervention in Libya and what that caused later on in just a second. But the hypocrisy is hilarious to see. So a lot of people have been criticizing him over this recent uh, statement, including Nico House. Now, Nico has been doing these videos on Hotspot. Him and Nick are doing these. They're really good at these, by the way. Some people are good at this TikTok style kind of thing. I am not one of them. I'll just let you know. <laughs> I'm not one of them. I want you to hear what Nico had to say, because Nico also criticized the hypocrisy of uh, Obama even making that statement of wanting to so-called care about people in Libya now. So some 80 journalist woke up in the morning, decided to take a sip of coffee and thought to himself, you know, it seems like a good day to tell a lie about what happened in Libya. So this columnist for the Washington Post had the audacity to say that the catastrophe in Libya was everyone's fault. And I'm here to tell you, he's full of shit. Like porta potty fixed right in between the taco truck and the coffee stand at Coachella levels are full of shit. First of all, the ongoing catastrophe in Libya is happening solely because of the US NATO working to assassinate this man, the former leader of Libya, Muammar Gaddafi. In 2011, the US and NATO powers decided to kill Gaddafi because they claimed that he was bombing his own people and what? Yes, this piece right here is very important. Remember at that point in time, we only received the narrative from the mainstream media as time went by we started to discover that some of these things that were being told to us were, it wasn't really the complete story, right? So again, this was another example of the U.S. government telling you this person is destroying their own people. So there's a cause and, and a reason for us to intervene. Just hold on to that button for just a second, because I'm going to tell, we're going to talk about what happened after. To kill Gaddafi because they claim that he was bombing his own people and what let them decide their own destiny, which of course, once again, is a lie. Let's start with the Gold Dinar Initiative. In 2009, Gaddafi met with the African Union, which he was currently president of, and proposed a plan where they used gold and oil-backed currency so that they would not have to purchase oil from America in any capacity going forward. Had yep. Gaddafi not been assassinated, this would have likely come into fruition because he was extremely popular across the African continent. And he was beloved by Libyans and Africans everywhere because he instituted popular policies like free water, almost totally free gasoline, and even free health care and education. And this is very similar to what happened to Imran Khan, right? This is someone that is beloved by uh, his constituents in Pakistan. I just I interviewed his friend a couple of weeks ago to talk about what happened and the conditions that Imran Khan is dealing with right now in prison. The U.S. government intervened because Imran Khan refused to take a position in reference to the Ukraine war. He wanted to remain neutral. So they did what they do best. They pushed the Pakistani government to remove Imran Khan from office and to imprison him. And that's where he sits right now in prison in horrifying conditions, uh, according to his friend that I just spoke to uh, recently. So I just want to remind you, this was another example of the U.S. government forcefully trying to either remove or execute a leader of another country that they said were harming their own people, but you come to find out they were actually popular with the people of that country. In addition to all of those popular policies, he also virtually eliminated jihadism in Libya. Through the release of Hillary Clinton's emails, we find out that the U.S. and NATO figure out about the plan for the gold dinar and decide to do something about it. Coincidentally, once the U.S. discovered this plan, rebels from Chad, a country that was mostly controlled by NATO and the country bordering Libya, end up wreaking havoc in Libya. And of course, Gaddafi was forced to defend his country. And that was the excuse NATO needed to claim that Gaddafi was bombing his own people as they then proceeded to bomb Libya for eight straight months. And NATO said that they had to bomb Libya and assassinate Gaddafi because it was a humanitarian crisis. 
But what actually happened is jihadism ran rampant after Gaddafi died and open market slavery was brought back to Libya. And the US, France, NATO, and everyone involved in the assassination of Gaddafi have had zero to say about it. So no, the Libya disaster wasn't everyone's fault. It was the fault of the same people who caused most of the problems in socioeconomic disasters around the world. Well said there from Nico. And I want to get into this first claim here uh, about Africa. And what a lot of people may not have known is that Gaddafi actually wanted to unite Africa. So this was another no, no, uh, according to the U.S. government. We can build United States of Africa, Gaddafi says. Now, this was reported 2010. And there's Gaddafi there. And I want to jump to this part right here. Gaddafi has been pushing for an African unity government for years, saying it is the only way Africa can develop without Western interference. But many African states say the idea is impractical or would encroach on their sovereignty. So they were hesitant to, to agree with it because they were afraid of what would happen, long story short. But Gaddafi was trying to push Africa to not have to depend on the West, right? And what do we see now? We see Niger rose up. Different countries are pushing back against, you know, Western interference and Western imperialism. We're seeing it, people are more loud about it now. And I think people are a little bit more courageous now. But I want to remind you, because a lot of times when you hear mainstream media talk about Gaddafi, they just say he was going to try to execute his own people and da da da. And they particularly leave this part out, which I think is really important. Like previous African summits, this week's gathering in Ugandan cap capital, Kampala, discussed steps towards creating an African government. But the issue was overshadowed by chaos in Somalia and an international arrest warrant for. Sudan's president. And I want to highlight Sudan here for a second because what's happening right now in Sudan? Now you see there's conflict in Sudan. I told you before, we'll still continue to keep an eye on it because I believe that could be the next proxy war. So we have to, all of these things are connected. And this is why sometimes like I like to go back and look at a little bit of history so that we can remember how we got here. Now, even Barack Obama himself Later on said the biggest disappointment of his presidency was Libya. Imagine that. Now, this was actually reported from The Guardian. Barack Obama says Libya was the worst mistake of his presidency. Barack Obama has said the biggest mistake of his presidency was the lack of planning for the aftermath of Gaddafi's ouster in Libya that left the country spiraling into chaos and coming under threat from violent Extremists. Let's highlight violent extremists. We'll come back to that. Reflecting on his legacy in a Fox News interview aired on Sunday, Obama said his worst mistake was probably failing to plan for the day after what I think was the right thing to do in intervening in Libya. It was not the right thing to do. Obama has conceded that the intervention didn't work. The president has tried to apply this lesson in considering the use of military and other circumstances that asking the question about what situation will prevail and what sort of commitments from the international community will be required after the military intervention has been ordered by the commander in chief. Now, let's go right back up here to the highlighted violent extremists, because I want to give you another example. If we remember when the U.S. government overthrew Saddam Hussein, what happened after? That gave rise to ISIS. So there's many, many criticisms of Saddam Hussein that we can make. Yes, his people were not too happy with him. Yes, he was a dictator. We can make all those criticisms. However, it is not the U.S. government's authority to remove leaders from other countries. Imagine if another country, imagine if Germany woke up one day and said, we're removing your president. Actually, some people would be happy about that. <laughs> some people would be happy like, yay, Biden's gone. But then they choose who comes in next or they don't choose who comes in next. And then it gives rise to more extremist groups. So 
When they removed Saddam Hussein, that gave rise to ISIS. When Saddam Hussein was in power, he was able to keep some of those extremist groups in check. When you take out the leader of a country that you don't live in, that you don't really know about, people can run amok and that's what happened. You would have thought the US government would have learned from that removal of Saddam Hussein, but they did not. They continue to do this till this day. That decision by Barack Obama's administration left Libya in turmoil, including it also gave way to the Libyan slave trade, which a lot of people don't want to talk about this. Obama blamed for Libyan slave trade as shocking video goes viral. So I want to remind everybody we are going back. We are going back. I'll make this bigger because the text is tiny on here. I don't know what that's all about. Former Obama, former President Barack Obama has come under criticism after a series of videos showing men and women being sold in a renewed slave trade has gone viral in recent weeks. Some critics have begun questioning how much the Obama administration contributed to the problem with its 2011 intervention in Libya. Obama has acknowledged this issue before calling it the worst mistake of his presidency. But as videos showing humans being sold into slavery shocks people around the world, the scrutiny has been renewed. And I want to remind everybody, never forget that. There was a video, and I still remember this to this day. Now, this was posted five years ago on YouTube, and it's CNN covered it. And I was actually shocked that they did migrants being sold as slaves in Libya, just to remind you what happens when there's U.S. intervention. <laughs> A man addressing an unseen crowd. Big strong boys for farm work, he says. 400. 700. 700. 800. The numbers roll in. These men are sold for 1,200 Libyan pounds, $400 a piece. You are watching an auction of human beings. Another man, claiming to be a buyer. Off camera, someone asks, what happened to the ones from Niger? I wanted you to hear that part. You hear what they just said? What happened to the ones from Niger? Mm -hmm. Sold off, he's told. CNN was sent this footage by contact. After months of working, we were able to verify the authenticity of what you see here. We decided to travel to Libya to try and see for ourselves. We're now in Tripoli and we're starting to get a little bit more of a sense of how this all works. Our contacts are telling us that there are one to two of these auctions every month and that there is one happening in the next few hours. So we're going to head out of town and see if we can get some sort of access to it. For the safety of our contacts, we have agreed not to divulge the location of this auction, but the town we're driving to isn't the only one. <laughs> Night falls. We travel through nondescript suburban neighborhoods, pretending to look for a missing person. We'll just scoot up here to a little bit uh, faster so you can see. And we're asked to leave. That was over very quickly. We walked in, and as soon as we walked in, the men started covering their faces. But they clearly wanted to finish what they were doing, and they kept bringing out what they kept referring to in Arabic as al buda the merchandise. All in all, they admitted to us that there were 12 Nigerians that were sold in front of us. And mm -hmm. I, I honestly don't know what to say. That was probably one of the most unbelievable things I've ever seen. And yeah, we'll fast forward a little bit here. here you know. They come in their thousands from Niger, Mali, Nigeria, Ghana. 
It's hard to believe that these are the lucky ones, rescued from warehouses like the one in which we witnessed the auction. They're sold if those warehouses become overcrowded or if they run out of money to pay their smugglers. Of these rescued men, so many here say they were held against their will. It doesn't take us long to find victory. Just take us home. No food. Just take us home. What a boy. No food, no water, nothing. Victory was a slave. We know that some people are being sold. Yes. Some people are being sold. Is this yes. something you've heard about? Can you tell yes. us about it? Sure. That? Tell us. I was sold. What happened? On my way coming, I was sold. Merciless beating. If you look at most of the people here, if you check their body, you see the mark. They're beating with electric. Even your boot or they took something, something like a sharp object. Understand? Most of them lost their life there. Um, I was there. The, the person who came to buy me give the man money. They take me out home. So the money was not even much. Other migrants now start to come forward with their stories. They took people to work by force. Even where we are at the seaside, where we are, where we are, where are working the work, they will be beating you. When you are working the work, I'm doing your work. They will be maltreating us. Just wanted to remind you of that. Barack Obama has blood on his hands. So when I hear Barack Obama say, "If you want to help the people in Libya, nah." You hurt the people in Libya. By the way, again, like I said, if the U.S. government had not intervened, they would have not been in this situation. The people in those countries, it's not just Libya, but the people in those countries are often worse off after U.S. intervention than they were before. So Barack Obama, like, really, you can miss me with all of this, all of this. If you're looking to help people impacted by the floods in Libya, check out these organizations. And then to have the audacity, the organization that he recommends is his own damn foundation. So he can miss me with all of that. People should not be giving him kudos or applause like this is a no, no. That's why I called it the Obama Libya gaffe. You got to have some type of some type of balls to post that after what you did. I'm gonna go to some of the comments in the chat. Bad Cookie says, "What's up to Sean Miller? I'm selling bootleg savvy gear, savvy dabs." <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> JB says it's crazy how a black man caused slavery to return to an African country. That's sick, to be honest. Shame on Obama. Barack Obama's brother, this guy says he's his brother, Malik Obama, he's on Twitter. He talks about Obama all the time in a negative way. Thank you for the super chat, Black Thoughts. Time to offer more democracy to Libya. Exactly. Exactly. This is why I continue to say that foreign policy is important. And I don't, I don't understand this whole uh, mindset of let's just talk about what's happening here. Let's just focus on America. Nah, it's all connected, boo. It's, it's all connected. So we have to know what's happening abroad. 